This is Health Africa on AAU TV. AAU TV is the voice of higher education in Africa. Today on Health Africa, we are discussing lead exposure. What do you know about lead exposure? Lead can be found in a lot of things in the environment, especially decorative paint. That is why we have Mr. Emmanuel Ojam Akumate, the CEO of Ecological Restoration, to help us delve into the issues of lead exposure. My name is Bridget Amadente. Do stay tuned. Are you an institution or individual? Do you intend to organize a memorable event to be archived for future reference? Then look no further than AAU Studios because it's your best bet with our spacious studio and state-of-the-art media equipment such as 4K Panasonic video cameras, KinoFlow lights, assorted microphones, live streaming equipment, among others, you are sure to get the best of productions. Visit us at Trinity Avenue, East Ligon, adjacent the National Accreditation Board, or contact the AAU Studios via the following email addresses, info at aau.org, aautv at aau.org, or ransford at aau.org. Alternatively, you can call us on plus 233-244-736280. Mr. Emmanuel Ojam Akumate, you are welcome. Thank you. Okay, so let's get the discussion started. What then is lead exposure? Okay, we talk about lead exposure where lead is lead, lead is lead mm -hmm. or set free okay. into the environment, affecting human life and then the general environment. Okay. The sources include the natural uh, earth crust, which contains some amount of lead, mm -hmm. and then the exposure starts from mining, mm -hmm. as in the northern uh, part of Nigeria and some parts of Senegal. Then, through other activities of mine, especially the uh, recycling of car batteries, mm -hmm. where the lead is uh, removed, remolded, and then it's exposed. The uh, people working over such do not have protective equipment. Then we'll come to lead in paint, otherwise known as lead paint, which contains some amount, it, it contains a substantial amount of lead. Why? Because when the lead is added to it, it helps the flow of the lead. It makes it, uh, of the paint, sorry, mm -hmm. it makes it very smooth. Okay. It makes it stronger and um, it gives it the color. Then we come to the toys of children, especially as Christmas is just around the corner. You have a, a lot of toys coming onto the market. And the, some of the most uh, brightly colored ones, yellow, red, just like the paint which is used in the interior or the exterior, which are, so they are even called the decorative paints okay. to give warm to the uh, what do you call it the structures mm -hmm. so we have the walls we have the tiles oh uh, sorry we have the uh, toys Toy. then children's playground their swings they are painted mm -hmm. some of these paints do contain lead mm -hmm. we have a uh, pipe bone water mm -hmm. containing lead especially if the water is delivered through a pipe uh, a lead pipe okay. and other sources like um, remolding or the molding of aluminium cooking pots mm -hmm. they use scrap mm -hmm. smelt it mm -hmm. so you when uh, it is being used some of this could still have lead being mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it leak, leaking into it it gets into the food and then it gets to our bodies okay. Now, this exposure is very um, hazardous, especially to children and the pregnant women. Mm. Why pregnant women? As I've said, various sources of lead in the environment. Then we breathe in, especially like uh, those have made mention of us, the mining area, the smelting area, whatever, lead is exposed. Mm. So you breathe it in. Then for children, uh, as we breathe it in, the lead goes into our bodies. Mm -hmm. It is stored in the liver, it is stored in the kidneys, 
in the brain for the adults mostly is the liver and the kidneys yeah. and then the bones so when a woman is pregnant the lead leaks into the blood mm -hmm. so um at the, in the with the fetus at the placental barrier some of the lead leaks into the uh fetus mm -hmm. And that is the most dangerous part because um, it goes into the brain, especially during the first three months of the fetal formation. That is where the brain undergoes uh, reorganization. Uh, things are being placed here and there. So if the uh, lead manages to get into the brain, now it's going to affect the brain. It's going to affect the spinal cord. Mm. Now, invest uh, scientific investigation has named this uh, when the, ch the child is formed, it undergoes several deformities or abnormal behavior in quotes, mm. which has been classified as lead caused mental retardation by the WHO. Mm -hmm. Lead caused mental retardation. Then the other aspect is too is that it affects the uh, intellectual development of the child. Mm -hmm. It affects the internet. That's the uh, the person develops a low IQ, mm -hmm. so academic work does not go on, go on well. properly. Mm -hmm. Or the child's performance in school and other places, and then also they become highly hyperactive. Yeah. Now we may ask, with all this, how do children get the lead into their bodies? Yeah. During the formative, uh, the infants that's between one and six you know they like to play around yeah. on the ground and the nature is that when the child picks anything from the ground it goes into the mouth so we call it the hand to mouth activity dust in the house may contain the lead dust or they touch anything and like i made mention of their toys mm -hmm. he picks the toy because it's attractive and for, like I said already, a child picks anything, it goes into their mouth. So licking on it will uh, go into the body. Now, especially in uh, school buildings where we have a freshly painted uh, wall, mm -hmm. that does not cause the problem. Okay. But then as the paint ages, mm -hmm. it peels off. Yeah. Now, the peeling off of the paint mm -hmm. from the wall mm -hmm. uh, generates a lot of, uh, what do you call it, the lead in the dust. Okay. And that is the most uh, vulnerable area to get the dust into the body. Okay. It is not limited only to schools, children's uh, playgrounds, our homes. Christmas is coming, people are going to paint their homes. Yeah. And then, because we are not aware of such a situation, the painter comes and starts scrapes. to scrape the wall. Okay. As, the, as the wall is being scraped of the old paint, which might contain lead, then we have the lead exposed into the atmosphere. You breathe it in. Even the painter himself has not protected yeah, himself. himself. So breathing it in will take it into his body. Then the dust that is around in the home, mm -hmm. children clawing around. So wherever you have... Um, a bright paint it could be a suspect because there are some paints which are bright but do not contain lead okay. let me lay emphasis on that okay. not all bright paints not all contain bright lead paint. okay. but some do especially the red and the yellow as we investigated on the Ghanaian market okay. so these are some of the ways by which we get lead into our bodies okay. and like I said in the children they suffer uh, how do you call it lead uh, caused mental retardation, mental retardation, low IQ, some could even fall into coma yeah, because it blocks yeah. the blood vessels and yeah. blood circulation because yeah. very poor. Okay. Yeah. So we've heard all the sources on what lead is. What are you as ecological restoration doing to salvage the situation? Okay. Um, ecological restoration is an environmental, non-governmental organization working towards improvement in the uh, natural environment, our lands, our water, forest, whatever. Well, so far as it is natural, 
uh, ecological restoration is, is involved. And we um, involve communities. Every community we'll go to will need their assistance because um, you cannot just go into somebody's environment and say, this thing that you are doing here is not good, so I want to correct it. So we interact with the communities, involve them in our activities so that we come out with, um, what do you call it, a harmonious solution to solve whatever problem we have there. Now, in the year 2012, United Nations Environment Program and then WHO carried out an activity over nine countries in develop, uh, developing countries, including Argentina, Azerbaijan, um, Chile, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Ethiopia, Kyrgyzstan, Uruguay, and I, I think I'm about the number. Now, what we did was we each country bought enamel or decorative paints from the open market. Then we took just samples and shipped the samples over to the US. Now, the results showed that the uh, paints on the developing market have, some have high levels of lead in them. So the, the follow-up was that each country or each NGO must carry out an activity to tell the country what was found out. So in the year 2013, Ecological Restorations held an interaction with the press, which I think about 20 press, those who were not invited were also present because it was sensational, to one, brief them on the issue of lead paint on the market, and then two, use that media as uh, a channel of awareness creation for the public. So we did that, um, Ecological Restoration, yes, did that activity by carrying out the awareness, telling the press to tell the public that we carried out such an activity on lead paints on our market. We had such results that some paints on the market are hazardous because they contain high quantities of lead. Then to tell the public this, that this is the situation we are facing. Uh, secondly, in the awareness activity, tell the uh, Guardian population that especially the painters, when they are going to do such a work, they must have personal uh, equipment yeah. to protect themselves, especially through the nostrils. Now, when you are buying paint on the market, you just look out for those that have lead marks on them it's uh, PB, okay. lead is PB. Okay. So, so I think some, there are some few paints on the market with that label on them. Others are just blank, they don't have anything. So through this activity, we thought, the, uh, we believe the press had gone out to tell Ghana that not every paint, uh, every lead, uh, sorry, every decorative paint on the market uh, is safe. Yeah. So in doing this, we mm -hmm. talked about the fact that uh, lead paint should have a particular level of lead in it. What is that level? Um, naturally, no amount of lead mm -hmm. is good for the environment or the human body. Okay. okay. It should be dealt with completely, like there should be no lead in it. Um, the environment itself is not perfect. <laughs> we hear of earthquakes happening here this happening there. So at any time, there's something going wrong somewhere. And let me say there are experts almost in every aspect trying to correct. So like I've said earlier, there no amount of lead in the body, it's safe. However, a minimum has been set. That is 1.2 milligrams per decilimeter of blood. 1.2. Personally, I checked mine about two years ago and it is above that. Where it came from, maybe I had uh, some other sources that I had, maybe through food or maybe I played on the ground as a child, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. 
But then internationally, it has been accepted that 90 ppm, that is 90 parts per million of lead in paint is acceptable. 90, that's the maximum. Because like I'm saying, there are some on the market which do not contain lead. And uh, what do you call it? Having 90 as the maximum is what has been set. And many countries are drawing towards that, setting that as a limit. Um, okay, the holistic or uh, the summary mm -hmm. of the SDGs, as you call sustainable development goals, is that we must have, uh, we must eliminate poverty, yeah. we, uh, we must have a chemical free environment, um, production must be clean or cleaner production, sustainable, so that by the year 2030, Nobody should live in poverty. The well-being of everybody must, must be achieved. The well-being of, um, of the environment must be achieved. So there must be a harmony between living organisms and the environment. We give back and we take. We give back and we take. And especially in children, SDG3, we talks about uh, well-being and health. As we've said earlier, if the infant, the fetus, has already absorbed, yeah. it means. So in summary, if we are able to eliminate lead paint alongside all the other activities that has been listed by the, uh, what do you call it, um, SDGs, hopefully by 2030, we should live in harmony with the environment, maybe like Adam enjoyed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. and, um the World Health Organization has come up with a kind of a policy to all countries that they should ban lead in paints. How far has Ghana gotten with regards to this kind of policy? Um, that's interesting. One, I don't work for government, okay. Okay. meaning that I don't work for MESTI or EPA. Mm -hmm. So I cannot talk on their behalf. Okay. But what I know is that in the year 2013, at a chemicals meeting in Nairobi, all delegates came to the conclusion that there must be funding for such a project. I know, I think there are some few countries that are enjoying that funding from Global Environment Facility, Jeff. And um, Environmental Protection Agency in Ghana, I know, is doing their best because they've uh, el uh, eliminated lead in our gasoline. So Ghana uses lead-free gasoline. Mm. Our uh, fuel for our motor vehicles are lead-free. So I believe they are still in the process, maybe seeking that funding to do the lead in page one. Okay. Like I said, I'm not speaking for them. What I've said is not coming from them. Mm -hmm. That is my mind. Why? Because, like I said earlier, in 2013, delegates at that conference, including Ghana, Pass the resolution that they must be funded for that project. Okay. So yeah. What will be your final word to policy makers out there, to paint companies out there, and even to parents who are thinking of scraping off and repainting? Yes. Um, what, I would, what I would like to tell everybody is that no amount of lead in the environment is safe. I will emphasize on that. No amount of lead in the environment or any other inorganic chemical is safe for human development. So we just must be cautious, try to prevent and protect our natural habitats that we have. Concerning lead paints, Christmas is coming, especially the children. So to parents, they should be aware of what toy to buy. If, I, I, uh, so far, like I'm saying, though uh, EPA has not come out with saying that maybe this colored uh, toys, blah, 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 let's, let's be a little uh, cautious about what we buy for our children during Christmas. We are going to paint our walls. I can, I can see this wall uh, peeling off. Mm -hmm. So it's possible lead 
could be uh, in the dust. Mm. So the uh, painter must also be protected. Okay. And I would really like to promote somebody's business by say, go to the market and search for uh, paint that is lead free. But then that is the best option we have now. So that's all I have. And then um, governments, policy makers should also enhance the process of legislation and implementation so that we will have a lead free paint on our markets. Oh, to all human beings, <laughs> from ecological restoration, I would say that let us seek, to everybody, let us seek to protect our environment because if we disturb the environment today mm -hmm. and we think we can go away with it tomorrow, the environment will meet us and we might find it more difficult solving that problem. So let's all help to solve environmental problems. Mm -hmm. Thank right. you very much. Thank you too. We had a great time and we've learned a lot. Thank this you. is Health Affect on AAU TV. We've learned a lot on lead exposure. We are moving on to talk to a doctor and also a pediatrician to tell us more on childhood disabilities that has been caused by lead exposure. Stay tuned. My name is Billy Bana. Good day, Africa. This is Health Afric on AAU TV. AAU TV is the voice of higher education in Africa. Today, we are continuing the conversation we had with Mr. Imano Ojama Kumate of Ecological Restorations on lead exposure. Today, we've brought a pediatrician here to help us delve into how lead exposure affects children causing childhood disabilities. It's going to be a very interesting one, and she's from the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital. You can imagine a lot of sharks. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. My name is Bridget Amadente. I feel so confident. Uh, the reason why I feel so confident is not because of maybe the courses just that I've been doing. I feel like I can do anything that I want to do. If you tell me to do something, even if I, I don't know how to do it, I'll learn, I'll take my time, I'll study hard, I'll probably not sleep for a month, but I'll do it because that's what Carnegie Mellon University have taught me to work hard, to read hard, to spend more hours doing research. And then at the end of the day, you actually see the results of what you've been looking for. It's very important not to uh be like uprooted from the ecosystem so like you the network that you build and things like that and what happens if you move maybe to the US for some time you sort of cut off from this uh, your network so uh, it's important to have studied in Africa because uh, that way you can maintain your network uh, of, of business people that you work with so for example I run a small business where I work with various people and if for if they wanted to get to have new projects to do with me if I was not in Africa, they would not get in touch with me. For me, the one of the key things was the exposure that I got. So the, one of them was working for IBM uh, in Nairobi. Uh, that was something that probably would never have happened if I've never had gone to CMU. We are excited about the future of East Africa and our role in educating the next generation of African leaders. This is just the beginning. You're welcome back. This again is Health Africa on AAU TV, your favorite health show on television. Dr. Emanuela Amwakon is here with us to discuss childhood disabilities caused by lead exposure. And she's from the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital. Dr. Emanuela Amwakon, you're welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you here today. It's a pleasure being here. Okay, so today we are talking about childhood disabilities that are caused by lead exposure. Lead can be found in paint, among other things. But why is it that children are most susceptible to childhood disabilities, to the effects of lead? Of lead poisoning. Okay, um, usually children are most susceptible to a lot of things just because they have um, little organs and lead is being metabolized and excreted by the liver. Their livers are not matured enough to metabolize and excrete as much. And then they have a wider body surface area. So then they tend to absorb more of the chemicals when they are exposed to it. Oh, okay. Okay. So why is lead poisonous in the first place? Um, lead itself, like 
everything on earth is not poisonous when you have it in adequate quantities, but when you have an excess, okay. then it becomes poisonous. So when you're exposed to it over and over again, like everything on earth, even water, they say, mm. when you have too much water, oh, really? it's poisonous <laughs> to you, yes. <laughs> okay, so if, if everything in excess is poisonous, then cool, but um, what are some of the signs and symptoms that you will see a child exhibiting that will let you know that, okay, the baby or the child has been exposed to too much lead? Okay, so um, we have what we call acute lead poisoning and then chronic. Acute is maybe they ingested so much lead at one time and then chronic is exposure over a period of time. With the acute lead poisoning, they can have seizures, they can start bleeding, they might have jaundice. You see that that's acute lead poisoning and then it drops their blood levels down. It destroys your liver because the liver is what is supposed to metabolize it and when you have it in large quantities, you have signs of liver failure, acute liver failure. But when you have it over a long period of time, that's when you see a child who has um, what looks like intellectual uh, disability, they can have seizures. You notice that this child was very smart in school and now it's um, um, not as smart as they used to be. Tingling sensation in the hand and feet. The tank might become, become blue or purple. And then if you do x-rays, you notice that there's thickening of the bones from this. Wow. Uh, how is it diagnosed? Okay. So um, usually, like every disease, we need a history. Mm -hmm. So um, a child or a parent brings a child and says, that I notice that my child is becoming worse in school. Maybe this child has had seizures when they were not having seizures before, maybe. <clears throat> the child comes in with anemia, like a chronic anemia. Then you suspect it before you go in to um, make a diagnosis. You can just take a blood and then um, WHO says that anything above 10 nanograms, yeah, 10 nanograms per deciliter, is quite high so when you have these values then you're worried that this person has been exposed to lead okay okay so um at what point do you say that um can it be treated at all uh, and at what point can you say that okay the level of lead exposure in this child has become something that will stay with the child okay so yes it can be treated um we give um med medication that is supposed to uh, sort of chelate like bind to the metals and help you excrete okay. them faster oh. okay and yes um the prognosis with lead poisoning i mean about 80 percent have full recovery and then 20 percent are stuck with their intellectual disability just because most of the times the brain cells don't regenerate as fast as they would when you're growing when when you're growing up you have the tendency to have new brain cells but after a certain age you can't build new brain cells so those ones that are gone are gone Mm. Okay, so what are some of the health implications then? Okay. So, um, well, as I said, mm -hmm. intellectual disability, yeah. so you have a child who might have seizures, chronic seizures, uh, you have a child who was smart in school before and now it's not. Um, uh, children um, might have cerebral palsy because an injury to a growing brain is what causes cerebral palsy. So if this child's brain was growing and at the time they were exposed to lead, then they can have uh, cerebral palsy. You have chronic anemias, which will bring in the child to the hospital, and then issues with the bones. Because the bones are thickened, then you have issues with mobility. Okay, so, but how do children even come into contact with such things? Because lead is related to paint, and how do they come into contact with such things? I mean, I know now uh, most paints are being put, most paints that are being produced are try, uh, they are trying to make them unleaded. But yes, if someone is staying in a building where it's painted with lead, just the exposure from inhaling, touching um, the, the walls of the paint, um, you, uh, you can have that. Uh, sometimes children who live close to mining areas are very, uh, could be affected because lead is one of the chemicals that the miners use a lot. Uh, if your parent works in a maybe battery shop and they come home, they just want to hug the child. Once you're touching the child, you're exposing the child. So most of these people, you see them with chronic, but not an acute. I mean, an acute would be, let's say the child swallowed the whole battery, but <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen that often, okay. yes. But that would be an acute. But most of these um, scenarios I've explained lead to chronic lead poisoning. Okay, okay. And is it contagious? Um, not, not that the lead poisoning is contagious per se, but if 
as so I said, your father works in a mine and then comes in contact with lead and grabs the child. They expose that child to the lead. Yes, so, but when the child is like ill, ill, that's, those symptoms are not contagious, right? But if someone has come into contact with lead and then they grab a child, yes, they are exposing that child to lead. Okay, we're going on a quick break. We'll be back shortly. Please stay tuned. Are you an institution or individual? Do you intend to organize a memorable event to be archived for future reference? Then look no further than AAU Studios because it's your best bet with our spacious studio and state-of-the-art media equipment such as 4K Panasonic video cameras, Kinoflow lights, assorted microphones, live streaming equipment, among others, you are sure to get the best of productions. Visit us at Trinity Avenue, East Ligon, adjacent the National Accreditation Board, or contact the AAU Studios via the following email addresses, info at aau.org, aautv at aau.org, or ransford at aau.org. Alternatively, you can call us on plus 233-244-736280. You're welcome back. This is Health Africa on AAU TV, and I'm with Dr. Emanuela Amwako. So you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so we're wrapping up here. I want you to give us your final words, your words of advice to parents out there who maybe works in the mines or something, someone who works with a paint company, anyone out there. Okay. On lead. Mm -hmm. So when buying mm -hmm. paint, uh, mm -hmm. you should be sure that um, the paint is unleaded. Fuel is now unleaded. Um, if you're going to move into a new building, you should do well to ask what the paint is made of. Uh, prevent your child from coming close to batteries and making them swallow it. If you work in a mining <laughs> company, battery company, anything that is expo exposes you to lead, when you come home, make sure you have a wash down uh, before you hold your child. Sometimes they miss you, but you miss them more if you just expose them to lead. Yeah. Yes, and then look out. For your child if you notice any changes that were not there before then um, you can report to the hospital and then a diagnosis can be made okay thank you very much for coming thank you it's been great having you yeah. viewers this has been health africa on aau tv we've discussed lead exposure and we indicated that lead can be found in a number of things including paint but all efforts to reach paint companies to talk about issues of lead and paint prove futile they didn't want to talk to us so let's just take the caution of being careful with what we use on our walls and all of that take care see you next week